everyone, how is it going? I hope you are having a fantastic day. In today's episode, we're going to make this super cute patchwork tote bag that is quite large. The size of this tote bag is about 17 inches by 14 inches. This bag has two external pockets on both side panels, a zipper pocket inside and also a couple of slip pockets. And we're going to use magnetic snap closure for this. And for the patchwork, we're going to work with half square triangles. And we will use charm packs or the 5 inch squares. And you don't need that many. You will need only 6 pieces out of various print colors. And 6 pieces out of um, light solid color. I'm using the off-white color here. You may also use some scraps of fabric left over if you have some that you can extract 5 inch squares out of those. Go ahead and do that instead. This is a great bag for you to have for your day trip for example or for your daily errands perhaps for market day. Although it is large, this is also soft enough for you that you can fold this away um, without taking so much space in your closet. Or if you're traveling, you can stuff this in your um, luggage. If you want to make this bag um, more on the stiff side, you can change the kind of um, interfacing that you use. Because obviously this is a quilted bag and I use fusible fleece um, for this. You can also use something like foam stabilizer or soft and stable that will make your bag uh, more stiff. So I think this is a really fun project and I hope you will give it a try. If you have any question about this project, simply leave me a comment down below. So we're gonna get started soon. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and your project turned out great. And consider subscribing to this channel. I post weekly fun sewing and quilting projects. So without further ado, let's get started. For the exterior shell, you're gonna need 12 pieces of charm packs or the 5 inch squares. Select 6 various prints and 6 light solid. I'm using off-white color here. You will also need about a yard of fabric, obviously quilt weight fabric. This is gonna be the accent fabric and the straps for the back as well. Take one solid and one print charm pack and then lay them right side together just like so. Make sure that all the edges are aligned. Then you want to go ahead and sew this all around with quarter inch of seam allowance. Then you want to cut this piece on diagonal angle just like so. And do the same with the other side. Then you're gonna end up with four triangle pieces. Go over to your ironing board and then you wanna press the seams open. So this will give you a half square triangle. You will end up with four set of half square triangles. Now go ahead and trim those bunny ears off. Your half square triangle should be measuring like roughly 3 one eighth of an inch. So we're going to square this up to 3 inches. I've got this square ruler from OmniGrid. This is a great tool to have especially if you like doing patchwork and quilting. So here is the 3 inch point. So I'm gonna line that up on my half square triangle block here. And I'm gonna trim off the excess fabric. You can obviously use regular ruler for this. Now go ahead and do the same with the rest of your half square triangles. Once you've sewn all of your charm packs into half square triangles, you should end up with 24 pieces of half square triangles. And this is how you're gonna lay them out. And you will also need to cut some strips of fabric from your accent fabric. The measurement of these strips should be available on the screen right now. I will also include that on the description box down below. Or you can also download the PDF template for free. It's available. I will link that down below in the description box as well. Now it's time to start sewing these pieces together. So I like to work one block at a time. So I'm going to sew these two pieces together. 
match the seams by nesting them together and you can use a pin if necessary and we're gonna sew this with quarter inch of seam allowance so you're going to sew from where the seams are since that area is a little bulky so you wanna put a little scrap of fabric that you fold twice there this will help stabilizing your presser foot and avoid problems with your needle bunching up now go ahead and sew with quarter inch of seam allowance then go ahead and set the seams by giving it a quick press now we are going to sew these two together now we are going to sew these together and you wanna nest the seams at the center then go ahead and sew with quarter inch of seam allowance and press the seams open alright so now our first block is already sewn now go ahead and work on the next block we're gonna start off with these two here Alright, so now we've got six blocks ready to go. We're going to sew each of these row of blocks together. Let's start off from this row. You want to focus on matching up the seams at the center here. So I'm going to put a pin. And then sew this with quarter inch of seam allowance. Then press the seams open. Once we've got the first row sewn together, now we're going to work on the second row. Then go ahead and sew the border strips. So our front exterior shell already done, now we are going to work on the next step. So these are the front exterior shell pieces already cut, um, this is going to be the back exterior shell. And this will be the bottom gusset. I actually put a sticker to mark it so I won't confuse it with the side panel because their measurement is almost similar, it's only an inch um, difference. And these two will be the side panels. Then you wanna prepare the interfacing. So we will use two interfacing. So first one will be the fusible woven interfacing and you will cut them exactly the same measurement as all the exterior shell pieces we're gonna also use the fusible fleece and we're gonna cut this an inch shorter than the actual measurements 
This is to minimize the bulk when we are sewing the panels together because we're gonna work with a lot of corners, especially on the bottom part. So for the bottom gusset here, I cut two pieces of this because I want the bottom part to be more sturdy. And here are the side panels. We're gonna fuse the woven interfacing first. Lay your fusible woven interfacing glue side up. The glue side is the one that you can feel rough like sandpaper. Then take your front exterior shell and lay that wrong side down, just like so. Then you're gonna fuse this with an iron on cotton setting. If you have a pressing cloth, you may wanna use that. And start off from the center and make your way all around and once you've done that go ahead and take your fusible fleece and you want to center that and kind of like eyeball this and make sure that all the edges has about half an inch of um, seam allowance and go ahead and fuse that and once you've done that go ahead and fuse the rest of your back pieces and then we're going to quilt only the front and the back exterior shell you can obviously skip the quilting part if you don't like quilting but I highly recommend you do that even if it's just simple straight stitches it's just great to add extra texture to this bag and make it looking more interesting it is also a great way to hide any imperfection when doing the piecing you know what I'm talking about for this bag, I did simple wavy stitches using my walking foot. They're about half an inch apart. So here I've got my front and back exterior shell already quilted. Now we're going to work on the side pockets. Cut a rectangle measuring 7 inch wide and 8 inch long. Now you want to measure in 1 inch from both edges of this rectangle just like shown here and then you want to take your ruler then you want to position your ruler on the angle from that one inch mark to the other end just like so then go ahead and cut right on this angle then we're gonna do the same with the other side so find that one inch mark and then cut so this should measure 5 inch and that's gonna be the bottom part of your pocket and this should measure 7 inch and this is where we're gonna put the elastic so you will need 4 pieces of this and this will make 2 pockets for both side panels of your bag so we're gonna set this one aside and then you want to lay these pieces right side together then you want to sew the upper top with quarter inch of seam allowance once you've done that go ahead and press the seams open and then you want to sew again with half an inch of seam allowance to create the elastic casing prepare your elastic I'm using quarter inch wide elastic here but you can use somewhere between quarter and half an inch should be fine and you want to cut this elastic five inch long now take a safety pin and attach that to one of the end of the elastic here thread the elastic to the casing and obviously you want to use the safety pin as your guide here and you want to keep an eye to your other end of your elastic just to make sure it's not gonna get lost inside all right so I'm almost to the end here take a sewing clip to keep this in place now go ahead and continue threading your elastic and once you've got to the other side you wanna go ahead and take your safety pin off and secure that in place with a sewing clip now take one of your side panel lay the pocket piece on top of the side panel you want to line up the bottom part of the pocket and the bottom part of the side panel 
and you want to secure everything in place with some sewing clips then you're gonna sew the sides here with quarter inch of seam allowance make sure you have your finger holding on to the elastic before releasing the sewing clip and here I've got both of my side panels already attached with the pack heads next we're gonna work on the straps so cut from your accent fabric two strips measuring 27 inch by 4 inches and we're gonna use fusible woven interfacing so you wanna cut this at the same length but only 2 inches wide now we're going to fuse the strap with the interfacing so lay your strap wrong side up and then your interfacing glue side down and you wanna center your interfacing then go ahead and fuse this with an iron the same way we did with the other pieces and once you've done that you wanna fold this in half and press now open the fold then you wanna fold the edges towards the center fold just like so and press and you want to do the same with the other side then we're going to fold this again in half and press then sew the strap all around with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance so here I've got both of my straps already sewn now we're going to sew the straps to the back so I've got my front exterior shell here now you want to measure in three and a half inch from the side at the upper top put a little mark there and then you want to do the same with the other side take one of your strap and then you want to lay both of the ends here starting from where you put the marks and you want to make sure that there is no twist secure them in place with some sewing clips then you want to go ahead and sew with quarter inch of seam allowance once you've sewn both of the straps we're gonna move on and work on the lining cut your lining pieces exactly the same as your exterior pieces so these two are the front and the back pieces and this will be the bottom gusset and these two will be the side panels these two rectangles will be the zipper pocket and this one will be the slip pocket now we're going to work on the zipper pocket so here I've got my back lining piece first thing first you're gonna need to find the center fold so simply fold this piece in a half and then give it a quick press this way you can easily find the center of your lining you wanna do the same with your pocket pieces as well now take one of your zipper pocket piece and lay that on top of your lining piece 3 inches away from the top and obviously you wanna center that and the right side of your lining should be touching the right side of your zipper pocket piece so just like shown here next we're going to draw a seven inch by half an inch of rectangle so lay your ruler an inch and a half away from the top of your pocket piece and draw a seven inch horizontal line obviously you want to make sure that the line is centered then I'm going to measure down half an inch and draw a horizontal line the same length 7 inch then you want to draw another horizontal line on the center of this rectangle then you want to draw a diagonal line on the side corner here about 3 8 of an inch so you're going to end up with something like this then go ahead and sew this all around you will only need to sew the outer lines
take a pair of scissors then you want to cut through the center line here and also the diagonal lines and you want to be careful once you get to the corner not to cut through the stitches once you've done that turn this piece to the wrong side and you want to open up those cutting lines finger press that a little bit and then go ahead and give this a quick press then you want to turn the pocket piece to the wrong side smooth that out with your fingers and go ahead and give that a quick press as well now you want to prepare your zipper your zipper should be measuring at least 7 inch mine is measuring 8 inch now I'm going to take my basting tape or wonder tape and I'm going to cut this about 7 inch and stick it on the edge of my zipper tape and I'm gonna do the same with the other side then go ahead and peel the backing paper here if you don't have this kind of tape you can also baste the zipper using hand stitching then go ahead and lay the lining on top of the zipper and you want to center the zipper teeth then go ahead and sew all around along the edges here I am comfortable using my walking foot to do this job um, I simply move the needle all the way to the left and use the edge of my walking foot as the gauge you may also use the regular presser foot to do this job Once you've done sewing, you want to turn this piece to the wrong side and then lay your other zipper pocket piece right side down and go ahead and sew this with half an inch of seam allowance and voila our zipper pocket is done now we're going to move on and work on the slip pockets lay your slip pocket piece right side up and fold that in half just like so and you want to pin this in place we're going to sew the top and the sides with half an inch of seam allowance however you're going to leave about three inches of opening at the top here to turn this piece inside out cut all the corners be careful not to cut through the stitches though now turn this piece inside out through the opening hole then you want to poke all the corners um, using my knitting needle here you can also use like chopstick or the tip of your pen then go ahead and give this a quick press and for the side where the opening hole is you're going to give this a top stitch and this will be the upper part of the pocket to sew the pocket to the lining we're going to first draw some lines so here i've got the center fold that was created by folding this piece in half and then give it a quick press draw two parallel lines quarter inch away from the center fold on both sides just like so then you want to draw an eighth of an inch lines on the edges here now you want to lay this slip pocket piece on the center of your lining piece three inches away from the top and pin that in place then you want to go ahead and sew this following the line that you've drawn so from the side to the bottom and up to the center and back to the bottom and go back to the side and that's it guys now you've got your slip pocket sewn now we're going to move on and work on the magnetic snaps 
you will need a set of magnetic snap so this right here is the female part and this one is the male part and these two are the washers measure down two inches from the top of your lining piece and you want to put a little mark there and you want to do the same for the wrong side as well then you want to take a couple of scraps from your woven interfacing and you want to fuse that on the wrong side of the lining right on the center from where you mark the 2 inch point once you've done that, take one of the washer then you want to line up the hole at the center there with the mark then you want to take your fabric marker and trace the two lines from the side holes of the washer now use your seam ripper and then you want to make a cut through this line just very carefully, you don't want to overdo it and do that with the other side as well since this lining piece is going to be at the front side we're going to attach the male part now you want to insert the two prongs through the two holes that we just created then you want to take the washer and insert that to the prong then use your fingers to push the prongs to the side you can also use pliers if you don't want to hurt your fingers and that's it now you want to go ahead and do the same for the back lining piece and once you've done that we're going to start assembling this back lay your exterior panel right side up and take one of the side panel and place it right side down on the side just like so and then go ahead and secure that in place with some fabric clips once you've done that go ahead and sew this with half an inch of seam allowance then you want to take the other side panel and lay that on the other side and sew this with half an inch of seam allowance now take your back exterior piece and line that up with one of the side here then go ahead and secure them in place with some fabric clips and then sew this with half an inch of seam allowance alright so now we're going to sew these two ends together so go ahead and put some clips and sew with half an inch of seam allowance and you're gonna end up with something like this now we're going to take the bottom gusset and we're going to attach this to the bottom part of the bag so I'm going to start from the side first so your half an inch of seam allowance should be sticking out at this point now once you've got to the corner here you want to maneuver your gusset a little bit to align with the next panel so this may be a little tricky but with a little bit of patience you can do that so you want to work this all around and once you've done that we're going to sew this with half an inch of seam allowance I suggest for you to sew one side at a time rather than pivoting around because this is kind of tricky part especially around the corners So once you've got to the corner here, simply backstitch and take your fabric off, then go ahead and continue sewing. Here I've got my bottom gusset already sewn. Now turn this piece inside out and poke all the corners. 
All right, I think it's looking great so far. Now you want to assemble the lining exactly the same way. So here I've got my lining already sewn. Now that we've got our exterior shell and the lining ready to go, we're going to do the final assembling. Turn your lining inside out. Insert the exterior shell into the lining, just like so. So you want to make sure that the right side of the lining is touching the right side of the exterior shell. And you also want to make sure that the front exterior shell is touching the front side of the lining and the back exterior shell is touching the back side of the lining. Then you want to secure them in place with fabric clips starting from the side panels here, just match the seams. And once we've done that, we're going to sew this all around with half an inch of seam allowance and you want to leave about 3 to 4 inches opening to turn this back inside out I recommend choosing the back side of the back for your opening I did mine at the front because I wasn't really paying attention I thought I was doing it at the back but it happened but it didn't ruin the look of the back so I'm pretty cool with that Once you've done sewing, go ahead and turn this back inside out. And I'm going to use my hair marker to smoothen up all the edges. Then you want to fold your opening hole towards the inside about half an inch then we're going to top stitch this all around start sewing from the opening hole and you may want to increase your stitch length to make it look nice and please do not rush this process just simply take your time and relax And that's all I have for you today guys. Thumbs up if you like this tutorial. And I shall see you next time with another fun sewing project. Goodbye.